Earlier this week, a particular sighting happened that I got some controversy uh, with my take on, so I figured let's dive deeper into it, kind of give my thoughts more elaborately, and also kind of, uh, you know, look at the controversy, look at people that disagreed with me and say, do they have a point? That's happened before, where I said something, people disagreed, and I kind of looked back and said, yeah, those people had a point. Uh, is that the case here? Well, let's get into it. First, what is the controversy? And again, I'm saying controversy, you know, people disagreeing is maybe the better way to phrase it. I did not love the Jawan Taylor signing when it happened by Kansas City and, and became even less of a fan of it once it came out that uh, Orlando Brown Jr. got less money than Jawan Taylor did. I thought it was a bit of a surprise that they gave him a four-year deal worth $80 million. I brought up his pro football focus numbers, which you see right here on the screen, that he was PFF's 65th rated tackle out of 81 eligible tackles, although you notice the pass block and the run block are two very different grades. Pass blocking grade is solid, uh, 75.9. That's, that's I would say, a good grade. That's the 30th best tackle. That definitely uh, makes you feel a lot more encouraged if you're a Chiefs fan. The run block grade, though, very bad. Can't even get it over 40. That's worst among eligible tackles, so tackles that had enough snaps. You also see his year in and year out production since he has been in the league in his four years. That's the, the bars you see that are going left to right. Uh, he finished, uh, you know, 65th in 2022, as I mentioned earlier, but 67th in 2021, 71st in 2020, and then 48th, his best graded year was his rookie year in 2019. Going over to this chart, which is just his grades, but uh, with a, you know, uh, split up now year in and year out, you see that each year he, you know, at least the, each of the past two years, he struggled run blocking, but actually had success pass blocking, whereas, you know, his first two years, uh, really the second year, I guess I would say, he wasn't really necessarily good at either, but his rookie year, he was a solid pass blocker, and then 2021 and 2022, he was a good pass blocker, kind of all around the same grade. The run blocking has never been spectacular, but was actively bad, according to the PFF grades, the past two years. The one other thing I would note here is uh, one thing that's definitely a positive, the amount of snaps he's taken. Over a thousand snaps each season. Being durable is a skill, so I'm sure that that is something that the Chiefs look towards and part of where his contract is going towards. But okay, so what? What does this all mean? Some people will just say it's PFF. Who cares about PFF and then just throw it out the window? If you know this channel, you know that that is not me. I do value that stuff, but acknowledge it's not always perfect and there are sometimes some issues. Is this one of those times? Well, I went back and I watched the tape. I watched every snap of Jawan Taylor last season and I wanted to give my opinion on what actually happened. I have to say... I think PFF is closer to being right than closer to being wrong here. I, I do tend to side with, uh, I see why those grades happen to be the case, but I also see the upside and see why the Chiefs made the signing. I totally understand it, and I'll get into why they made it, and then at the end, I'll tell you if I think it was the correct move or not. So let's just get into the film. So we can start off with this play. You know, we talk about his bad run blocking grade, and so that's something I wanted to check out, and to be honest, it's it's clearly true. I mean, to me, when I watch this tape, he's, he's just not much of a run blocker. That's just not his thing. Like, this is him going up against Max Crosby, who's admittedly a really good player and can definitely make anyone look foolish but you're going to see him look foolish here. Watch as Crosby easily wins that matchup. The run went to the other side, so it didn't matter, but still, these are the kind of things that just jump out on tape when you watch it. Is that, again, this is just not what they're signing him for, and I think the Chiefs actually are kind of viewing this as, well, hey, we don't run block uh, we don't have our offensive linemen run block that often because we don't run the ball that often. It's not as valuable to us as it is for other teams. And I actually think that's a smart way to look at it. Again, part of why I say that this signing, if it wasn't for so much money, I think would make perfect sense is because uh, you're finding someone who isn't great at a particular aspect uh, of the game that you don't value that much. That's actually, you know, those are the players you should be trying to get. But like heading over here, th this is a weird thing that I just noticed where you see where he is on the screen. I'm going to show you a few examples of this where he's just going to not block anybody. And this happened a good amount where he would just go up to a second level and just not 
find anyone to block. You know, if it happens once, I just assume, okay, miscommunication or something, or just the way the play broke down, uh, you know, how it works, it is what it is. But this one's another one. You see where he is on the screen. He's going to move up to the second level and then just find nobody to block. Uh, again, these things do happen, and I don't know how much of it is his fault, but I'm assuming it's some of it. Some of it is his fault because he's the only guy I really noticed doing it. This time he's gonna be pulling over from the offense's right to the offense's left, but watch him kind of get held up by a wide receiver. He had room to get around, it looked like. So this kind of the a bit of clunkiness here, and almost makes me wonder if the Chiefs see this and feel like they can fix it. They feel like it's a Jacksonville Jaguars issue and not a Jawan Taylor issue. And there definitely is upside for that. And I definitely think that there's a very real chance he could get better and could fix those uh, those things. I don't think that that's a crazy take whatsoever. And if that is what the Chiefs are thinking, I, I think it to some degree makes sense. Because like going over to his pass blocking, like I said earlier, there is legitimate good stuff when it comes to his pass blocking. Like you legitimately see him, I think at times, showing that he can be an effective pass blocking tackle. Uh, something like this, where he's going up one-on-one -on -one against Joey Bosa. Joey Bosa, really good player. Watch out when his play begins. Bosa uh, looks like he's going with a rip move right here. Gets his right arm underneath uh, Taylor's uh, right arm. That's what he's trying to do right here, and I think doing it uh, relatively effectively. However, Taylor is able to eventually win this matchup, drives Bosa to the ground, and does not allow uh, Bosa to be able to get to uh, the quarterback here, Trevor Lawrence. That's what he was trying to do. That's his job, and the fact that he can at times you know, win these matchups is good, but like I say when I always talk about my film studies involving offensive linemen, part of why watching film studies on offensive linemen can still be a little bit tricky is because you're not really looking at what can you do or what can't you do. It's more so how consistently do you do it? How consistently do you pass block? And I would say he uh, pass blocks and wins relatively consistently, but there's there is a bit of an asterisk I would put on it. Something like this where, uh, you know, first off, I'm just going to say uh, I'm not holding this play against him, okay? Because it's a rep against Max Crosby, and Max Crosby's going to just have a complete dirty move here. So, uh, you know, this is just a great move. Do not hold it against uh, Jawan Taylor, but just watch what happens. Watch as Crosby pulls off this great spin move, but it didn't matter because Lawrence got rid of the ball quickly. The Jaguars did a great job at avoiding pressure this season. They got rid of the ball quickly a lot of the time. Uh, they, you know, I think Lawrence did a good job of avoiding pressure, actually, which is something that has been a criticism I've had of him in previous uh, years going back to college. But he, I think he did a very good job this year. And there were plenty of times where Taylor looked like he was about to get up, a, give up a pressure, but then the ball came out of Lawrence's hands, especially the second half of last year. And I do think that was a factor here uh, in all of this. So while yes, maybe some certain statistics look very good for Taylor, I think when you put them in a, you know, we actually watch the tape and when you, uh, you know, look at this a little with a little bit more of a trained eye, you can kind of see why. That's not to say he was a bad pass blocker. He wasn't. I think he was a, definitely a, an above average pass blocking tackle, but I don't know how much I would call him a, a great one. There's plenty of people that when they hear someone bring up PFF, they say, okay, you're an idiot. Goodbye. I don't want to talk to you anymore. Uh, you know, I used to also buy into those memes of, oh, PFF is stupid. And then basically what would happen was I started making some videos saying, you know, like, why does PFF have this grade? And then I would go back and watch the tape and be like, oh, I actually, like, that kind of totally checks out. That that makes sense to me now that I've watched the, the film. I, I see where you're coming from uh, here. And again, sometimes there's additional context that make the grade, uh, you know, make more, like, I, I think I wouldn't pay as much attention to it. That totally happens. I think people at PFF would even say, like, yeah, that happens sometimes. But uh, more often than not, it's a situation like how I would view this one, which is I go back and watch the tape, and it's like, yeah, I would probably view him as a, like a B- to, you know, uh, like, like a B pass blocker and an F run uh, blocker, which puts him right where PFF has him. Like, that feels about right to me. And I guess the question is, is that player worth $20 million a year? For me, clearly no. I don't think so. I think that that's a bad contract. Now, again, some of these issues are potentially fixable, right? Like a lot of the him running around and not blocking anybody, you put him in a system where, you know, he, you know, 
you make it clear where he's supposed to block, all of a sudden he, uh, you know, he does not have that uh, issue anymore. The fact that they won't run block as much should just inherently make his, uh, you know, PFF grade next year better because more pass block reps, less run block reps. Although I would say it's not like the Chiefs don't run the ball. You know, the Chiefs running the ball is still an effective part of their plan and a, a part of their game plan. They they run the ball. They have success running the ball. Uh, they don't do it a ton, which is part of why they have success running the ball. But Running the ball is definitely an aspect of their game, and the fact that he struggles as a run blocker is still a negative, in my opinion. It's just, the reality is, I like the player. I like adding the player. I think that that is smart. I think that it's a little bit questionable of, is he going, he's never played left tackle in the NFL. He's now supposed to. Uh, is that going to make him better? Is that going to make him worse? I have no idea. But that's that's a question mark. It is. And there's just there's too many question marks for me to feel comfortable uh, paying him twenty million a year. The reality is the Chiefs have made moves that have been surprising at the time, but have worked out, like the Tyree Kill trade. So I don't think it's totally fair to say that. Uh, you know, I, I think it's fair to say that there's. You know, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they know something I don't, but it hasn't been perfect either. I mean, the, the Frank Clark contract I think is an kind of what I view this as potentially being, which is you're getting a good player, but you're just paying too much for that good player, which makes it a bad contract. I think some people uh, have a hard time realizing that you can add a good player and have it still be a negative asset due to the contract. That's what I'm expecting is going to happen here, but I listen, wouldn't be the first time if I'm wrong, so we'll see how it works out, but those are kind of, you know, a deep dive, giving my, my thoughts on it. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you, and of course, as always, thanks for watching. All right, one last thing uh, before I go. I just, just remembered, uh, you know, the, the initial video I made, I, I came off very harsh on Juwan Taylor, and, and I was too harsh on him. Uh, you know, uh, I I think that it, it's unfair to say that he was, you know, I kind of talked about him as, uh, you know, a, a bottom of the league tackle, and, and that's probably unfair. While his total PFF grade was there, I think that looking at the, you know, the pass blocking splits, he's better than that. But again, is he a top 30 tackle in the league? I don't know. Uh, I would say no, uh, but I'll let you, uh, you know, disagree on that. But he's at least, uh, I don't know, uh, he, there's there's value in a Jawan Taylor at the very least. But yeah, I uh, figured I should just uh, mention that as well. Anyways, goodbye.